Do I need to be behind the table as well? Excellent. Very good. Good evening. Welcome to Glendale. My name is Josh Groves. I'm the building principal here. Uh, I'm glad that you took time out of your day to come uh, tonight and be with us. Our goal tonight is to hopefully um, share with you the scheduling process, what it looks like, how, how it will work, um, and I'll ease some tensions that you might be feeling about the classes for next year and the way that will feel as far as the schedule goes. So our goal tonight is to answer every question that you could have. We'll present a little bit about what it looks like for your students, um, knowing that in the summer we plan to have what we would call our regular orientation <coughs> event, um, where students can come to the building with parents, walk the schedule, see their see the classes, meet the teachers, all of those things. So that's our goal, but to get to that place, we have to be able to get schedules made. And so that's our goal tonight, is just communicate what that process looks like, how it works, um, because it's very important. It's really the foundation of everything that we do here. Uh, so we're gonna do that. Uh, again, my name is Josh Groves, and uh, I'm the building principal here. If you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out um, via email. You can find my email on the website, and I will respond very quickly. So take pride in, in trying to communicate well with our parents. So reach out if you need anything at all. From this point forward, I will leave it with Mr. Kemper and our freshman counselor, Ms. Nitzville. Thank you, Mr. Groves. Um, like I said, my name is Greg Kemper. I am the principal for the freshmen here at Glendale High School. I've been in that role for the three years that we've had the Freshman Academy. Um, just some of the names that you might, you, your child might come into contact with more than others here is Mr. Groves and then myself and Miss Ditzfeld. She's the freshman counselor. She is visiting via Zoom tonight. So. Ms. Ditzfeld, can you still hear me? <laughs> well, she, she did a little bit ago. Sorry, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so she's not paying any attention to me. I'll just have to routinely check <laughs> make sure that she is paying attention to what we're doing. Um, but Mr. Isaac Isaiah, he was at um, Hickory Hills um, as an intervention coordinator. He is also somebody that your child uh, might work with some. Um, he's involved with our freshmen. And then Marissa Weaver is our uh, academy coach that we share with Hillcrest High School. This is all pretty straightforward. We're just trying to give you some information, kind of like uh, Mr. Grove said, kind of ease your mind and then give you what you need uh, to get started with the scheduling process, which is kind of seems daunting probably, but it's it's not too bad as a freshman. You only have certain things you can take. So it's just a little bit of decision-making comes into play. Uh, we'll go Freshman Academy details. I have uh, our lead teachers are here and I'll introduce them here in just a minute. They're gonna talk to you. We'll go through the scheduling process, transitioning into high school, look at what the eight block calendar looks like for the year. Um, that you'll see here in just a minute. Uh, closing remarks, dismissal, and then we'll field questions from you. We're trying to do things a little bit differently this year. Uh, we're not supposed to have like lines of people up here asking questions afterwards, so we'll just ask you if you have questions and you can just ask whatever. We'll try to help you leave here um, knowing exactly what you came here to find out. So. We'll do that at the end, but, well, we don't have a word from our current PTSA president because she couldn't make it to the second meeting, so I apologize for that. But essentially what she was gonna tell you is if you want to be involved in PTSA, okay, there's a sign-in sheet up here, and it just, it'll give you, it'll give, let her have your information so that um, they can reach out to you and talk to you about what that's going to look like next year. This isn't for something that's currently, you're not going to be in PTSA for the rest of the eighth grade year. This would be for the freshman year uh, moving forward. Uh, PTSA does a lot of cool things at this school. I, I would be surprised if there's any other school in the district that, is as, that has as good of a PTSA as ours. They do some really they, they've purchased several things in our building. Uh, some of the, the, the water fountain drinking stations that you can put your bottle 
up to and, and refill your water bottle. They have purchased those. Um, she had a list of stuff that she that she didn't really leave, um, but there's there's several things they've done, and they also do a lot of cool things for the teachers. They do a lot of um, lunches and and just different things. They're always looking for somebody to help. She made it very clear: you don't have to hold held an office position. You don't have to. You can be as involved as you want or as not involved as you want. They just want you, if you want to have something to do with PTSA, she invites you to sign your name on this. So it'll be up here at the end of the night if you'd like to do that. So, without further ado, I want to uh, introduce Miss Claire Spence and Miss Sonia Detterding. They are our freshman team leads. Uh, they're awesome teachers. They I'll let them explain to you kind of how our Freshman Academy is set up. We're recording this, so I have to stand over here. How our Freshman Academy is set up and kind of the thought process behind it, and it's best to hear from them. So here is Sonia and Claire. Hi, I'm Claire Spence. I'm the English teacher for the Red Team and I'm the team lead. I've been a team lead for three years. Okay, three years. So the great thing about Glendale is, um, I know a lot of you all are apprehensive because you think of high school and your kid is coming into a student population between 12 to 1400 kids. It's a lot different than middle school. Um, we just want to reassure you that the Freshman Academy is, is a family and the way it's structured. So when you come in, each kid, your child will be on a team. So this team will consist of the same teachers all year long. So they're not gonna be shuffling around to different teachers because we have a large faculty here. Um, also, the Freshman Academy, we're located in one section of the building. So your kid isn't going to be, I mean, they're obviously gonna be traveling around the building to choir, different things like that, but most of their core classes will be in one area. Um, I really wanna stress to you that we are here for your, for your child. We're here to help them succeed. Um, it's a small learning environment. The class sizes are small, so we can concentrate on, um, we can just get in more in depth with our teaching and help your kids succeed, especially as a freshman in high school, because it's a rude awakening. And I don't want to say we baby them, because we don't baby them. We support them. We support them. <laughs> kind of like tough love but um, most of the time we all get along. So, um, I will let Mrs. Detterding add on to that. Thank you, Claire. Uh, so my name is Mrs. Detterding. I'm the lead of the blue team, and I'm also the math department chair here, so I'll put a plug in for that here in a second. Um, but just to kind of piggyback off of what Mrs. Spence said, um, the Freshman Academy, the purpose is for the transition to high school to be easier. And I kind of mentioned this earlier in our first session, like it's a scary move and I don't want students or we don't want students to walk in the door thinking, oh, I'm in high school now and teachers don't care if I fail and it's supposed to be hard and you know, it's tough love kind of stuff. And it is tough love, but I truly don't think you could ask for a better group of freshman teachers to take your kids in and really show them the ropes of high school and love on them and teach them like how to be successful. And I even said this earlier, with my 21 years of teaching, it is the greatest educational movement and experience I've been a part of because it just supports kids so beautifully. We take on interventions to help kids that are struggling. We push kids that are high flyers to be even better than what they are and we discover everything across the board that we could do to help our freshmen figure out how they can fit into Glendale. Um, and I, I am passionate about that, we all are. And the Freshman Academy teachers that chose to be on the Freshman Academy are all passionate that way. They chose to be with the freshmen, which is, some people would be like, freshmen are terrifying and I don't wanna be around them. So that's like, we wanna be there and we wanna help them and support them and it's the best. Um, to plug, to go into like the scheduling component of this, um, scheduling is hard. And, but as a freshman, you kind of have just like a set amount of things you have to choose from. But from a math perspective, that's the course area that has the most to choose from. And you need to be really careful about what math class you choose, depending on your current math class. So if there is any questions you have specifically about what you should take for math next year, 
um, just raise your hand afterwards and I'll come visit with you or they don't want us all really kind of congregating up in the front but I would be more than happy to explain what math class you're supposed to be signing up for next year. So we're looking forward to having all of you guys next year and whether you're on my team or Miss Spence's and um, it's just a great place to be here at Glendale. So thanks for coming. Thank you. Miss Spence and Mrs. Detterding. They work very hard. Uh, like she said, they, you know, they all chose to work with freshmen, and so uh, there's something to be said for that. It's a great group of people. They have, um, they they meet weekly. They have a com common planning time, um, and we all have meetings, and and it's just, it's it's a very positive thing. Plus, we have an intervention time built into our schedule this, starting this year. We have had that so. And all freshmen are given to our freshman academy teachers. So there's a good chance your child will have a teacher that they really enjoy being around and they will actually have them as an intervention teacher and have them 30 minutes right in the middle of the day to catch up on stuff. Or to, I mean, if they don't have any issues, then they use that to maybe get to know their teacher a little bit more or other kids. Or, so it's a, it's a very good thing. We work hard at it, so. Um, well, let's see here. Okay, so now, really the, the bulk of what you're here for is the scheduling paperwork, okay? We'll talk about Freshman Academy a little bit more at the beginning of the school year to, with back to school stuff and when you can come in and look around the school and things like that. Meet the teacher type thing. Uh, but for now, uh, Ms. Ditzfeld, who I think can still hear me. Christy, are you there? I'm here. Okay. Christy is going to talk through the scheduling stuff and we'll, uh, we'll walk you through whatever you, if you have any questions or anything. So Christy, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. So I can't see any of your faces, but I'm told you can see mine. <laughs> so hello. Um, so for scheduling, I am Ms. Ditzfeld or Christy. I, I tell the kids they can call me Christy or Ms. Ditzfeld, whatever they're comfortable with. Um, I am comfortable with that. And so I will be the freshman counselor next year. This is my third year as the freshman counselor. And um, I am really excited for next year to hopefully be like a wonderfully normal year where <laughs> we're all back at school. So with that, um, whenever you are walking through scheduling with your student, it's important to plan for next year to be a normal five day school week where they're going to be at school five days a week, normal week. So, um, this year it's going to be really different for the scheduling process. Instead of me going over to the middle schools and sitting down with them, walking through the selection of studies, it's all going to be virtual. So I have done a Loom, which is kind of like an interactive Google slide thing <laughs> where I am talking while going through the selection of studies and you can see my face, you can listen to me talk, and um, I go really in depth, walk you through the selection of studies step by step, talk to you about some of the things we'll talk about tonight. and. Um, it's a lot more in depth. So I'm not gonna dive real deep into the selection of studies because you'll have access to that loom tomorrow. Um, those, the um, schedule for the scheduling timeline <laughs> will be up on the middle school web pages, the Glendale web page, and we'll also have the loom attached to that. And then it'll also be sent out an email. So we are going to try and hit you in very different ways so you can access that all the time. And so if you have the selection of studies sheet or packet, I'm told it's you a should. few pages. Yeah, and I'll add to that, the, the, the papers that you got out front, the one that's stapled together, that's the selection of studies sheet. So that's the one that uh, Ms. Ditzfeld is talking about. Okay, so as you go through that with your child, whenever you sit down to actually go through the selection of studies, it's important to make sure you really pay attention to the directions um, and you know, think about being very purposeful and intentional whenever you're making your selections. 
Um, I always tell people it's a really good idea to have like a little piece of paper next to you and write down your selections as you go through so that um, you know how many classes you've chosen. And, it, and you can't just go by classes, you have to now go by credits because there's classes that are one credit and there's classes that are a half credit. So you have to make sure you add those up at the end to make sure they total eight. So you might have eight classes written down and it only equals six and a half credits. So you need more. So it's important to write those down as you go. And it's also important to write them down as you go because at the very end of the selection of studies, I ask you for alternates. And I ask students for alternates because scheduling isn't perfect. It's like a big puzzle that we're trying to put together and sometimes certain pieces don't fit. And so if there's a selection that your child has made, um, they will get all of their core classes. So don't worry about that. But if there is an elective or something that doesn't fit into their schedule, then the alternates, I can go to their alternates and pick something from their alternates and see if that works. So that way they have a better chance of getting something that they've actually selected instead of me just having to look at what's available and being like, oh, well that fits. I'm just gonna put that in there. Um, or having to guess, would they like this or would they not? And most of the time I get it wrong, I think. So, um, so it's better for them to have a choice in what I have to put them in instead of me just trying to choose, because that's not fun. Um, so make sure that they have eight total credits. That is a magical number when you're doing scheduling. They can't have any more and they can't have any less. Freshmen don't get open blocks, so they don't have a seven, you know, seven period schedule, they're going to have a full eight. Um, here is a little timeline that you can see under number three of kind of the timeline of how things are going to roll out this year. So tomorrow, the first email is going to go through to, to parents of all eighth graders in our feeder pattern, and it will have a link for, or it will have the page that will talk about, again, it'll have the timeline on there, and it'll also have a link to that loom. So that's the big thing is the loom that is gonna walk you through, and you can watch it. It doesn't have like, you know, you can only watch it one or two times. Like, you can pause it and go back to a place where maybe you're like, okay, I didn't quite understand that, and you can look at it. So that'll go out tomorrow. And then Friday the 29th, a second email will go out and it's gonna be pretty similar to that first one, just kind of a reminder, hey, um, after this weekend, scheduling is gonna really start. So Monday, February 1st, that's the big day. That's the day that scheduling opens. So you guys mark that in your calendars, that's the big day. Um, and then you'll have a full week. So February 7th, that Sunday, it will close at midnight. So we like we like giving you guys a full week because then if you have questions as you watch the loom, or you know you don't quite understand something, or your child has a question, then you guys can email us, me or Mr. Kemper, and we will answer your questions for you. That way, hopefully, we can um, avoid you know scheduling in the wrong class or anything like that. So um, hopefully that week period will give you guys a lot of time to, you know, go through the selection studies with your student. And if you have questions, reach out. Uh, okay, so the on the next slide, um, it talks about some of our elective courses for the Freshman Academy. Um, we have multiple choirs, bands, orchestra, um, our seated world languages are Spanish and French. If your child is really interested in doing a foreign language that we don't offer here at Glendale, but is offered online, that is something that we can definitely look at. We don't typically like our freshmen to do many online classes just because coming to high school is really hard. Like I know Ms. Spence and Ms. Erding said, it's, it's a really hard transition. And so um, 
throwing anything else in there. I know it's not going to be too new, I guess, to your kids because they're kind of used to online. Um, but throwing anything in there that might be a little bit difficult outside of the norm, um, we don't want to put anything extra on them. So, <coughs> excuse me. So we try not to put them in many um, online classes. So we understand though that, you know, if they want something like a world language that isn't offered at Glendale, but it is offered online, we're not gonna hold them back from that. And as long as it's the appropriate fit for them, then you, we can work to make that happen. Um, we also have speech and debate, fine arts, facts, classes, business, all kinds of options for students. And they are, there's options, but they are also limited because they are freshmen. So there are um, going to be more classes that will open up as they grow into high school. Um, but for this year, they're going to have a smaller amount of options, but it's still a lot. <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to the wonderful weighted multiplier. I know everyone is excited about this. So Springfield Public Schools operates under a weighted grade system. So honors classes, dual enrollment, AP classes are all weighted courses. So that ranking is on a 5.0 scale. So if your student is thinking that they just want to challenge themselves and see how they do or if they want to be in the running for valedictorian then they have to abide by the four five five four and what that is is they have to take four honors classes their freshman year five their sophomore and junior year and then four their senior year and um, this maximizes their way to gpa and they could potentially have a 5.0 GPA. Okay, so I don't understand the math. And I told the last group, if you want to learn the math about the weighted multiplier, you can ask Mr. Gross because he was a math teacher and I'm a counselor, I don't do the math like that. And so you can ask him about that. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but if your student wants to qualify for valedictorian or if they just want to have the highest GPA they can possibly have, then they're going to want to abide by the 4554 rule. And um, for freshmen, it is kind of tricky sometimes um, because we only offer geometry honors. There is not an Algebra 1 honors course. So they would have to take geometry honors their freshman year in order to, as a math class in order to qualify for that. But we can be creative and we can work to find other solutions. So if your student is in that boat, don't think that they can't qualify for it or that maybe we can't think a little creatively and find a way to get that fourth honors. Um, and it doesn't mean that a student is not valedictorian quality if they didn't take Algebra 1 their freshman year. Absolutely not. Um, so don't let that, you know, keep a student from trying to reach that, absolutely. Let us know and we can work with you on being creative and thinking outside the box. We've done it a few times and, and it's worked out well. So just let us know if you're concerned about that. All right, so um, the transition from middle school to high school, like we've all said, it can be really hard for students. And that's one thing that I love about the Freshman Academy is that can you still hear me, Greg? Yes. Okay, good. Yep. It looked like my internet was gonna cut out. Hope you're fine. Um, so the good thing about the Freshman Academy is that they really do have a family like surrounding them and you know making sure that they're successful. And they really are helping them um, move forward and make a positive transition from middle school to high school. And it's, it's really great to see, and it's wonderful to see the relationships between the students and the teachers. And I can't say enough good things about it. I've really loved it, and I've loved being a part of the Freshman Academy. So a big thing about that transition from middle school to high school is that you have to earn your credit. 
So you have to earn the credits in order to move forward to the next level of a course. So students are not going to be moved up in classwork just because now they're a sophomore. They have to pass English 1 before they can move on to English 2. So it's that can be a really hard transition for students to understand. Um, in, for, in terms of your graduation requirements, the Arrive at 25 handout is really helpful and it's a great outline for you and your student to look at and understand, okay, these are the 25 credits that I have to have, like the bare minimum to be able to graduate high school. And again, we can be creative if we need to be, but the good thing about our system at Glendale is that they can earn eight credits every year without having to go to summer school. And if they want to go to summer school, plus those eight credits, you know, they're doing great. They're going to be just fine. Um, so it's, they have a lot of opportunities to earn more credits than they need to graduate. So to me, that's really important that we offer that because if students do fail a course, we understand life happens, coronavirus happens, and it makes it really hard for everyone. And you might have a bad semester, you might have a bad year, but that doesn't mean that you have a chance of graduating. So we can help, we can help find a way to get kids across that line and get them graduated. Um, so don't think that, you know, a minor setback is going to keep them from reaching a goal. Just reach out to us and we can help. Um, so required freshman courses are English 1, which is one full credit, U.S. History, one full credit, math, either algebra or geometry, one credit, physics first, one credit in freshman seminar, which is a half credit, and they'll take that during their first semester at Glendale. And um, they also are encouraged to take PE and health their freshman year. They can take it during the summer before their freshman year if they want to just get it out of the way, if they, um, you know, are taking things like band or a foreign language and um, or I don't know choir or something like that um, that can open more credits for them to have open to electives so if that's important to them they can take those during the summer or if they just want to take them during the summer and they don't want to take them during the school year they can like Mr. Kemper said remember this year it's going to be um, online for the explore program so our summer school program is all going to be online so that's something to take into consideration if they're thinking about doing an online summer school class um, we really encourage them to take the pe and the health their freshman year um, because not only is it a way for them to get to know other kids um, and you know learn about other people and all that kind of stuff they also we don't want them to wait until like their junior or senior year to take pe and health because they are graduation requirements and we don't want them to be taking it as a junior or senior in a class with a bunch of freshmen so everyone needs that for graduation so might as well get it done and out of the way and then also have a lot of fun because we do have a lot of fun in PE and health. There is a lot of fun stuff that they get to do. We have great PE and health teachers um, that enjoy having a good time and, you know, they get to play fun games and do fun stuff and they really get to play and make new friends and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, it's great. So um, I will hand this back over to Mr. Kemper and let him talk about the a block calendar. All right, perfect. Thank you, Ms. Ditzfeld. No problem. Very weird having somebody not here <laughs> to do this, but anyway. Um, so since she mentioned the virtual stuff for the summertime, we're, we're not completely sure what that looks like for an eighth grader going into freshman, to be quite honest with you. But what we have been told is that all high school in this summer, will be virtual okay there is not a seated plan for high school right now in the summertime 
Okay, so that's what we know. Um, today. Today. <laughs> Mr. Gross could change tomorrow. They'll probably tell us something different tomorrow, so we may be sending you another link somewhere. But uh, no, anyway, I tease. But the uh, the reason, you know, we she, we're not trying to tell you, have the kids be here for health and PE. Whatever works best for you, depending on what they're wanting to do. We don't, we don't try to tell you where you should put your kid, okay? We're just telling you that if they, if they don't take PE and health in the summertime, which virtually, it can be tougher, okay? It's, it, virtual classes as a freshman being your first taste of freshman year, it can be quite difficult, okay? So that's one thing to think about. Another one is, if we put 40 kids in a PE1 class, like if Coach Julian teaches health first semester and has all these kids and he's teamed with all these teachers in a team and, and then he can have 40 kids in a PE class, you know, 99% of those kids are gonna be freshmen. It's just another way for them to get in there and interact with each other and get to know somebody else maybe or it just build stronger friendships through playing different games and competitions. And, so we like to have them here with us so that we can have all these important conversations in our team meetings and um, especially the core classes. We really urge, to, urge you to, to let us take care of those core classes their freshman year. So, but regardless, we, we want to support you however we can, but that's just kind of our thought process on that. Okay. So, Kimber, yes, sorry. yes, ma'am. Yes. Sorry, ahead. I was just I was gonna piggyback off that real quick and just say I forgot to say that um, we strongly encourage our any student really um, to take their core classes um, seated or online during the school year, not during the summer because taking a core class over the summer, it is really, really fast, and they don't get everything that they do get during the school year, because it's able to, you know, they're able to have conversations and spread it out, and it allows for that cushion and learning. And um, But over the summer, it is very, very fast paced and um, can be extremely difficult, especially for kids making that transition from middle school to high school. So. Again, like Mr. Kemper said, we will support you in whatever decision you believe is best for you and your child. However, it's our professional recommendation that they take the core classes during the school year. All right, there you go. Um, so after talking with Ms. Dennerding after the last little meeting, she thought that this calendar would be the best thing to show freshman parents incoming freshman parents. Um, this is our, our calendar for our block. Our, this is our block calendar, okay? Your child will be on a A, B block schedule, okay? And the, the biggest thing here, and the, there's, there's always confusion, is that when we go, like you can see there on October 23rd, and I know it's kind of confusing because it goes left to right and then down. So if you look at October 23rd, you notice that on October 22nd, we had a red day. Okay, so red for us is blocks one, three, five, seven. Okay, so no matter if it's just a two day weekend or a three day weekend or a four day weekend or a uh, Christmas break or whatever, the next time we come back to this building will be a blue day. And you can see that. Okay, so it's called a rolling eight block. And so on the blue day, they'll have two, four, six, eight. So if we have like a whole month with no days off, they'll have two weeks where they have their red classes three days that week and their blue classes twice. And then the next week they'll have their blue classes, blue classes three days and the red classes twice okay and it's confusing like we we were talking we were laughing about 
you know, we look at the, we have these signs when you walk into the building that, have, that are giant that say, today is, it's, it's colored blue, and it says 2468, and you literally you have to have those, <laughs> because we, we can't keep track of it either, you know, we want to think, oh, every Monday is a, an odd day or something like that, no, 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 it's, it rolls through the whole school year, and so, and as you can see, we, we end up having 89 days for one, 88 days for the other, so no matter how you slice it, it comes out even, close to even, okay? I'm not a math teacher, or never was, but that's not quite even, but one's gonna be bigger than the other. Um, so, anyway, that's the biggest thing. And we have an intervention time built into our schedule every day. They go with the same teacher every day, and teachers can draft them. They can draft your child, and that means that they can be taken to their class if they have something they need to work on, if they need to finish a test, if they need to catch up in this, they need to catch up in that. And the beautiful thing about that with the freshmen is that that team of teachers are the ones that have the freshman intervention kids and they can talk about who they're drafting and when and where and why in their team meetings. So everybody understands what's going on and it's, it's great. So, um, oh, hi Christy. She's right, we can see her. <laughs> uh, so the, the young man that's on the screen there too, Colin, we, you know, we uh, did some fundraisers in our feeder schools, Hickory and, and Pershing. You, got, you kids in here were probably a part of that. And, and uh, he had a, a life-changing surgery and, and we really felt like we should do something to help the family out to, because they were gonna, be displaced for quite a while and so we just try to do all kinds of different things and a lot of this comes up through different conversations some a lot of it's not I mean that's a big that's a big deal um, that's a major thing major event but not it doesn't always happen that way but we have all kinds of conversations about students and how we can help do certain things and so that's the environment that your child is going to be in and it, it really is a small learning community which is which should give you some peace um, in a school as big as this. Uh, they'll have a freshman seminar class that will, they will explore these pathways. Actually, they will explore these pathways. And, but it won't be something, it's, it's through assignments and different activities and things that they will get in freshman seminar class, okay? Um, I remember when we started this process three years ago and we went to the feeder schools to talk about it and parents were, some parents were very adamant that we were gonna try to pigeonhole students into careers and we were gonna tell them they don't need to go to college. And that couldn't be further from the truth of how this actually works. We are academy, we are an academy school. The first step in that is they have a freshman seminar class where they do career exploration as a part of the class, okay? It's only a semester, okay? It's required that all freshmen take it, and they just look at different things. If, if, if your child decides they don't wanna have anything to do with any of the pathways here, then um, it, it only takes up a very minute amount of their schedule. It's one class moving forward all three years. It's a, it's a very small amount, okay? But if they do decide that they wanna get into like, if, if they already know they love science and technology, so they, they might wanna go into the STEM stuff, then they can dig into there, they'll do career aptitude tests, they'll find out what they really like to do, and Maybe they end up going into that someday, maybe they don't. But I will tell you, for sure, they will not be pressured by us to do any particular thing. We just want to let them kind of see what's out there, see what our Chamber of Commerce here in Springfield is saying are the jobs that are open that they can't fill, that pay really well, and, and just kind of, you know, like uh, I know Mr. Groves had talked about, there's a guy who, um, who talked to, was it the 
the group of, it was a group of you and he presented it as you know I can take a kid straight out of school that's interested in this career and they can make six figures and not go to college I can bring them in and train them and let them learn how to work for me or they can go and get a lot of debt and but that's a few and far between thing but that might work for I mean, it's gonna work for somebody you know so just understanding that there are more routes than just one or two particular things we just try to let the kids see what all is out there so and to me we didn't have that when I was going through school and uh, so I just figured out after I declared a major that I didn't want to do that and so I was behind you know it's just we try to help them uh, move forward before any of that takes place okay so pretty short and sweet the biggest thing is the scheduling part um, we do have Miss Bartels here she's one of our counselors um, Christy's still online with us uh, do you you know I hope that we were able to answer any questions that you have um, I don't think we forgot to go over anything in particular just a just a, um, a glimpse of how the freshman Academy is set up uh, we can't really do any meet the teacher stuff normally your kids would be with uh, the team of teachers playing doing different fun activities and games but we, we can't do that right now so um, our plan is to do that sometime in the summer right before school starts I, I would be surprised if we couldn't so we're we'll have some last-minute activities planned is what we're hoping we're hoping for so you can get in here with your child and look at the school and uh, they can do some stuff to get to know their team of teachers and different things like that so um, but anyway so what do you have any questions for us I guess is the biggest thing now